Zayaret Matkal is the most elite of Israel's commando units and the primary unit dedicated to hostage rescue missions within Israel. Founded in 1957, Sayeret Matkal operatives have led or played an instrumental part in almost every notable counter-terrorist operation conducted by Israel. The unit is modeled after the British Army's Special Air Service, SAS, taking the unit's motto, Who Dares Wins. Sayeret Matkal is tasked with the most risky intelligence gathering and reconnaissance operations, as well as other crucial missions behind enemy lines. During periods of war, Sayeret Matkal has been assisted on occasion by other Israeli special forces units, including Shayatet 13, Shaldag, and the 669 Rescue Unit. Many of Israel's political and military leaders have emerged from the ranks of Sayeret Matkal, including Prime Ministers Benjamin Netanyahu and Ehud Barak, IDF Chiefs of Staff Shal Mofaz, and Moshe Ya'alon, Shin Bet Director Avi Dikter, Mossad Chief Danny Yatom, and Naftali Bennett, leader of the Jewish Home Political Party. In 1954, Israel's inaugural Special Operations Unit, Unit 101, was disbanded amid the public outcry stemming from the Kibia massacre. This decision left the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, without a dedicated Special Forces Unit, except for the Navy's Shayatet 13, a naval commando unit that couldn't entirely replace Unit 101. It wasn't until 1957 that Major Avraham Arnon, formerly known as Hurling, a former yeshiva student and Palmach fighter, petitioned the IDF general staff to establish a unit capable of carrying out top-secret intelligence-gathering missions deep in enemy-held territory. Arnon's vision, supported by David Ben-Gurion and Yitzhak Rabin, was to create a select unit comprised of the most exceptional and intellectually gifted Israeli youth. Candidates for this unit were meticulously hand-picked ensuring they were the cream of the crop in terms of both physical and intellectual capabilities. Originally a part of Amman's Unit 154, later designated as Unit 504, Sayeret Matkal began operating independently a year later under the direct supervision of the General Staff as Israel's premier special operations force. Modeled after the British Special Air Service, SAS, Sayeret Matkal members underwent training by Bedouin trackers to gain a deeper understanding of their adversaries. Established a year after Israel's first helicopter squadron, close collaboration between these two units allowed Sayeret Matkal to undertake longer and deeper incursions into Arab territories compared to its predecessor. Arnon's concept for Sayeret Matkal, which he initially commanded, was to execute strategic intelligence gathering missions and other high-level operations, receiving its directives exclusively from the general staff. Additionally, Sayeret Matkal played a vital role in evaluating new weapons and doctrines that could impact the entire IDF. The unit's inaugural operational mission occurred during a dedicated assignment in Lebanon in May 1962, which paved the way for a second operation in Syria five months later. In the early 1960s, Sayeret Matkal conducted numerous intelligence gathering operations in the Sinai Peninsula, with the last one occurring just four months before the outbreak of the Six-Day War. Despite extensive preparation and planning for their missions, Sayeret Matkal did not see action during the war itself, but was heavily engaged during the subsequent War of Attrition. Following the 1967 Six-Day War and the emergence of Arab terrorism, particularly by groups like the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, Sayeret Matkal began developing the world's first counter-terrorism and hostage rescue techniques. Operation Isotope marked the beginning of several high-profile operations, thrusting the unit into the spotlight, even though its existence was classified at the time. In 1972, prior to the Munich massacre, Sayeret Matkal operatives were dispatched to West Germany to collaborate with German authorities and potentially conduct hostage rescues, though their advice went unheeded. During the subsequent Operation Wrath of God, Sayeret Matkal struck at the PLO in Beirut. The Yom Kippur War in 1973 brought a significant shift to the unit, with Israel engaged on two fronts and the general staff occupied with managing the war, Sayeret Matkal 
found itself without specific missions. Sirat Matkal officers were divided into two camps, one advocating for the unit's reserve status to avoid unnecessary casualties, and the other pushing for more immediate action, even if it meant missions with less planning, resembling commando operations more than the strategic focus of Sayeret Matkal. The latter group prevailed, and Sayeret Matkal took on operations on both fronts. After the war, the unit proactively developed plans for wartime scenarios, enabling immediate action without waiting for general staff orders and missions. A reserve company within Sayeret Matkal was also designated for close cooperation with the Israeli Air Force, addressing a gap revealed during the conflict and later evolving into the Shaldag unit. In 1974, Sayeret Matkal faced a significant setback when a failed rescue attempt resulted in the Ma'alat massacre. This event led to the creation of Yamam, tasked with domestic counterterrorism and hostage rescue, while Sayeret Matkal shifted its focus to foreign counterterrorism and hostage rescue missions. Two years later, on July 4, 1976, the unit embarked on its most famous mission, spearheading Operation Entebbe, to rescue hostages held in Uganda by Palestinians and German terrorists, supported by Ugandan soldiers. The mission was a resounding success, although it came at a cost of three hostages, and the unit's commander, Lieutenant Colonel Yonatan Netanyahu. Despite its secretive nature, Sayeret Makal wielded significant influence within the IDF. The unit pioneered helicopter infiltration techniques in Israel and played a pivotal role in convincing Israel military industries to produce an Uzi with a folding stock for improved accuracy while retaining a compact design. In 2015, the unit received an honorable mention for its activities during Operation Protective Edge. In September 2023, the IDF announced a new pilot program allowing women to join the unit for the first time, set to commence in November 2024. The unit maintained an extreme level of secrecy during its early years, and its existence was not officially acknowledged until the 1980s. Many of its operations and capabilities remain classified to this day. Selection of fighters and commanders was an exclusive process, primarily relying on personal acquaintances and referrals. Starting from the 1970s, while still retaining its secrecy, the unit began admitting voluntary recruits. Biannually, it conducts a notoriously grueling selection camp known as Gibush for potential candidates, a multi-day ordeal without sleep, where recruits are constantly monitored by doctors and psychologists. Those who successfully pass this arduous test are granted admission. In the 1990s, this rigorous selection practice was adopted by other IDF special forces, such as Sayeret units. The fundamental requirements for consideration to serve in the unit include a medical profile of 97 with no disqualifying clauses, a quality category known as Kaaba of 52 or higher, and an initial psychotechnic grading Dapar of 50 or more. Once accepted into the unit, recruits undergo approximately two years of intensive training. This training places significant emphasis on various skills, including camouflage techniques, urban combat and patrolling, bomb and landmine diffusing and disposal, fast tactical shooting, survival skills in desert and mountain environments, martial arts, navigation, reconnaissance tactics, small unit tactics, tactical driving, tactical emergency medical procedures, tracking tactics, unconventional raid tactics, map and compass navigation, proficiency with small arms and light weapons. One of the culminating challenges in their training is completing the 120-150 kilometer, 75-93 mile, beret march in the final four days, earning them their distinctive red beret. The training program follows this general structure, four months of basic infantry training, conducted at the paratroopers basic training base, which is part of the regular paratroopers basic training routine, two months of advanced infantry training, specific to the unit, a three-week parachuting course at the IDF parachuting school, a five-week counter-terrorism CT course at the IDF counter-terror warfare school, followed by additional inner unit CT training. 
The remainder of the training concentrates on long-range reconnaissance patrol training, with a particular focus on navigation and orienteering, essential skills for the unit's missions. While most orienteering training is done in pairs for safety, Sayeret Matkal stands out as one of the few IDF units that conducts solo long-range navigation exercises. Towards the end of their training, Sayeret Matkal recruits, along with recruits from other Special Forces units and pilot cadets, undergo a two-week course simulating enduring captivity. In a surprise mock kidnapping scenario, they experience prison-like conditions and face interrogation, threats, physical violence, and demeaning tasks. Following their training, all soldiers in the unit undertake an officer's course and assume various positions within the unit and other IDF units. Combat soldiers are required to commit to an additional 36 months of service beyond their mandatory term. Many of these combat soldiers commence their undergraduate university degrees towards the end of their service. Despite having its own insignia, Sayeret Matkal is one of only two units in the IDF, the other being Duvdevan whose soldiers are prohibited from wearing their insignia in public due to the classified nature of their operations. This lack of insignia often makes Sayeret Matkal operators recognizable, as it is well known that Matkal troopers do not wear unit badges.